Hi, uh, my name is Timur, and um, three years ago I did this talk. Uh, yeah, this is my title slide. And three years ago I did this other talk uh, about initializing a variable in C++, where I went through all the different ways in which you can do that in C++. Um, that was before C++20. In C++20, we got more ways of initializing variables. Um, so one of them is something that actually doesn't have a name in the standard. I call it direct aggregate initialization because it's initializing an aggregate using parens, and we call initializing something with parens uh, direct initialization. So I just came up with this name, direct aggregate initialization. I don't know how much sense that makes. But um, basically what happens here is that you have an, yes, I'm showing code in a lightning talk. Um, we have an array, which is an aggregate type, and uh, we can initialize this with braces. Um, that works, but then in C++20 you can actually initialize that with parens as well. So that, that compiles in C++20. And you can also do that with an aggregate uh, class. If you have an aggregate class like this, you can initialize it with braces, obviously, since C++11. And in C++20 we can also initialize this with parens, and that's also going to work. Now, that doesn't really look very useful right now. Like, you might think the committee is just making things more complicated to make you have more pain. But actually, no, this is very useful because um, it allows you to um, do perfect forwarding on constructor arguments for aggregate types. So that means you can now use things like make shared or in place back with aggregate types, and that's pretty cool. So that compiles now in C++20. The other thing is that um, kind of as a it fell out of that as well is that now you can initialize your aggregate initialization in a macro. Um, if you have a macro like assert, and in there you have aggregate initialization, that completely falls apart because C++ uh, preprocessor grammar cannot handle a comma inside a brace inside a macro, but now you can write it with parens, and that's going to work as well. So that's all great. Um, and like now it, it kind of looks like it's doing the same, right? Braces and parens, aggregate initialization, but turns out it's not quite the same because um, it's direct initialization, so it's kind of like calling a constructor, which is kind of like calling a function, and that behaves a little bit differently from the brace initialization. So there are a few, a few differences. One of them is that uh, braces allow, uh, don't allow narrowing conversions. Parens do. On the other hand, braces allow brace elision if you have a nested aggregate, like this one. Parens don't. Here's another one, if you have a um, reference member and uh, you give it a temporary, like the number 42, which is used to initialize this reference member i, then braces actually extend the lifetime of that temporary. Parents don't. Um, right, and here's my favorite. This is, this is really cool. So we have, uh, we have a struct A here, which has two members, and the second member is another struct C, which has an explicit constructor, okay? Um, and now we're just initializing the aggregate with parens here. We're just default initializing the C. Um, this is great. It also works when you use parens. That's all good. It gets weird when we uh, omit, uh, kind of, when we don't explicitly initialize the C, right? Because if we don't explicitly initialize an aggregate member, then the standard says that it's going to be initialized as if by copy list initialization from an empty braced init list, right? And um, that is direct initialization. Um, sorry, no, copy list initialization is a form of copy initialization, and copy initialization doesn't work with explicit constructors, therefore you get a compiler error here, okay? And the same thing happens if you do it with parens. However, if you then omit the 42 as well, um, you still get the same problem with braces, well, you can't use the explicit constructor, but if you then use parens, that works. Because that actually is not aggregate initialization, that is value initialization. And that's going to zero initialize the aggregate because that actually had a meaning before C20, right? You could always write a paren paren, and that would value initialize the aggregate, and uh, we did not change the meaning of that um, because that would break code. So that actually is not aggregate initialization at all, that is value initialization. So you gotta remember that, that's very important. Um, and that's all I have for today. Thank you very much.